is John Matthews. Uh, <clears throat> I, I lived uh, most of my childhood on Cherry Way in Hayward. I uh, graduated from Hayward High School in 1950, January 1950, and we moved to Hayward as near as I can remember about 1939. How uh, Hayward used to be rural at the time, and we kept a, a pig and chickens, and the kids used to take uh, uh, the the uh, cow down and stake it alongside the railway right away when they went to school and the cow would graze all day and when the kids came over from school they'd pick the cow home and t pick the cow up and take her home. Uh, my dad kept bees. He had 2,500 hives of bees. Uh, in Hayward here, which was rather surprising, there used to be a lot of eucalyptus groves around and, and that's what the bees got the honey from. Uh, <clears throat> I can remember mowing the lawn when the, when, I, when the the radio announced that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. They, uh, I had a f Japanese friend, Takamoto, a kid I used to run around with, and they on one day he just disappeared. And I never did as a kid. I never did find out what happened to him, you know. And uh, but later on, I I did find out. I never saw him again. Uh, and the Hayward Airport at one point was a Japanese uh, strawberry patch. And when, after the the Japanese were interned, I'm the, all the people went out there and they picked up uh, strawberry plants. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Oh, they let us out of school to pick tomatoes right, during the war. They had us handling scrap iron and the rest of it, uh, collecting scrap iron and newspapers and stuff like that. Uh, they had uh, rationing well, because we lived in a rural area and, and we butchered our own pigs and stuff. It didn't really affect us as much as except the gasoline, which was a terrible problem. Yeah, when I was in high school, the hill behind, it's all houses now, used to be wild. And there used to be horses up there. And we'd take off at lunchtime and last school was a horse and ride around <laughs> until it was time to come back to school. Uh, when I was in, in grammar school, I went to uh, Luther Burbank Grammar School. At that time I was in the Boy Scouts. And we went out to Niles Canyon, and there was a, a dam out there. It existed until I think they tore it down last year. But it was a, a campground out there, and there was a, a, a homemade bridge across the creek, and you could go out there, and there was this uh, campground, and there was a uh, this dam. And when I was a kid, there was eight feet of water on the on the wet side of the dam. It since silted up, it filled up almost. But I, I, I was so much fun out there. But when I was a kid, I used to ride out when they were filling up for the, the Oakland airport. There was a steel, three, about three foot in diameter, steel pipe they used to pump the fill in from the bay. And I used to walk out on that and we'd catch sharks. And I had a, a bike and a little red wagon and had stakes on the wagon and I would catch, oh, Maybe maybe thirty sharks, uh, four feet long, and I'd load them in the wagon and haul them home. And then I used to give my I stake a couple up, and I'd give my mother some, uh, you know, four or five stakes. And I used to cut them up in a in a, and I had a fifty gallon drum up on uh, cement blocks, and I would dump them in that, and I would cook them for the pigs. Pigs really liked it, and I really gained weight on it. And, uh, when I was in high school. There was a, uh, a place in Castor Valley, it was an auction yard, Reed's Auctions. And at that time they were bringing horses in from Nevada and Utah that, that good, fairly good confirmation, but they hadn't been ridden. They were six or seven years old. And you could go down there and if you watch the auction, there was somebody would buy one of these horses and take it home and after it tried to kill them, 
you'd bring it back the next week and sell it to sell it at the auction. Now you could always <laughs> probably most knew about know about. So us kids used to uh, chip our money together and buy a forty dollar horse. Now and uh, just generally, no nothing as mean as a forty dollar horse. I mean, no nothing can as mean is as mean as a forty dollar horse. But there were five of us involved, and we take it out, and this kid out in Casarella had a corral, and <clears throat> poor horse on a Saturday, uh, one kid had climb on and the horse would buck him off and, and everybody would laugh and then another kid would climb on and the horse would buck him off and everybody would laugh and by the time they got through five kids and started on the first one again the horse never had a chance in about three weeks we'd have that horse trained to the point where he'd back s stop neck grain just about anything you want he'd stand when you left him and then we'd take him back to the auction yard and we have some, one kid was a particular rider, and we'd have him ride around the uh, the, the auction yard there, and show uh, to demonstrate the horse could stop on slop on his haunches, or neck rein, or back up all these things. And then we could get for a forty dollar horse after we did a number on him, we could get about three hundred dollars, and that was that was fun because you used to get pitched. Everybody, everybody used to laugh. I got hit the horse through his head. I got hit in the mouth with his head. I got nine stitches inside my lip, top lip, busted my nose. But every it was fun. I mean, everybody enjoyed the excitement of it.